I think we'll start this out with an example. You know, the Hilbert chain is you're going to have a path. Under my oh, oh, oh. You grab by the function. Qualifier. Yeah, right. we might be wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> We're funny, but not always in time. Good. Y'all see that back there? That thing right there. You know, it's kind of got this bald spot on it. They call that an eagle, bald eagle. No, bad, sorry. And that's a whole, I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, that is a, is a pseudo mountain. <laughs> we, we do call it Mount Spokane. Um, but uh, um, it has nothing to do with this lecture other than the fact it's in the background. Um, no, actually it does. It has everything to do with this lecture because it's a discriminative stimulus for me. Um, but I'll get back to the discriminative stimulus stuff because we're really talking about reinforcement. If you recall reinforcement, well, gosh, I got I digress again. Huh, there we go. Whew, nice and bright. All right. Oh, motivating operation to put those being back on. I'll come back to that later in another video. Yeah, all right, so anyway, reinforcement. Um, by itself, reinforcement, no, I can't do it. Sorry, I, motivating operations. It's just, that's just too, oh, so much better. That's reinforcing. Ha ha, caught you. That's another video, but you'll- Stop being negative. Why? <laughs> that you had the wrong, no, Brad, you're talking negative is bad. Negative is good, negative is great, negative is reinforcing. Oh, sorry, people. We're, we're totally doing behavior analysis stuff that probably doesn't make any sense unless you watched a whole bunch of videos, but that's okay because we want you to watch all of them. Um, you might find some contradictions, and if you can, point them out. We'll reinforce you with a thumbs up or something. So anyway, um, back to the topic at hand is a discriminated operant, but I'm getting ahead of myself again because reinforcement and consequences and... Anyway, yeah, all right, reinforcement, right? When you have a reinforcer and it reinforces a behavior and a behavior is strengthened, right? So the consequence, whoop, and behavior goes up. That's two terms, reinforcement and the consequence. Um, but we also talk about a three-term contingency. Well, how in the flip do we get a three-term contingency out of it? Well, you have to have a discriminative stimulus or, a disc or an S delta. Well, what the flip does that mean, people say? Well, it's really simple, all right? To get that three-term contingency, which is the best way, one of the best ways of describing behavior or helping understand behavior, we need to reinforce in a context, in a particular, or with a particular antecedent event, right? So for example, it's, it's, it's a wee bit warm out here today. Just, just, just a wee bit, and it's a wee bit bright. So in the presence of sunlight, sunglasses might be reinforcing. So what are they reinforcing? They're reinforcing me putting them on. They reinforce me carrying them in my pocket. They reinforce me failing to sit on them. They reinforce me for keeping them. So anyway, the point being that putting your glasses on and earning a reinforcer for that's one thing, but in a particular context, um, let's say the context of the sun, which is a discriminative stimulus, right? Then we develop that three-term contingency. So it transforms from this two-term contingency into a three-term. So that three-term contingency is about a discriminated operant. All right, dude, that was stupid. That three-term contingency is about a discriminative stimulus. So something that signals that reinforcers are available or an S delta. An S delta is something that signals that no reinforcer is available, okay? So there's another great video on that in basketball games at Gonzaga. So anyway, go look at that one uh, to understand S deltas. So when we add reinforcement in a particular context, then we get this three-term contingency, which is why we can't separate discriminative stimuli from the whole thing. Because in order for an SD to be an SD, it has to signal that reinforcement is currently available. In other words, if you engage in behavior, bleh, whatever it is, you can earn a reinforcer. And S delta simply says, if you engage in behavior, bleh, you're not gonna earn a reinforcer. These things are simple, folks, okay? Um, so that three-term contingency doesn't come out of somebody's bomb. It's not just pulled out of Skinner's, well, we'll leave that alone. Um, but uh, he didn't just magically say there's three terms. Um, it, it was developed as a result of experimentation and understanding the, uh, the, the details of what happened in those experiments. And that reinforcement was never out of a context. It's always in a context, which is why, folks, that one behavior in one setting is reinforced. But that same behavior in a different setting, you know, isn't reinforced. If you go to a movie theater and put on your sunglasses, people just think you're flipping weird or super high or something. They don't, it's not a behavior that's typically reinforced in that setting. So we have to keep that in mind, that the value of a context comes from what happens in that context, not just from the context of it in itself. So if, if reinforcer happens in a particular context, that context might become a discriminative stimulus. Now you have a three-term contingency. That whole thing, when we put it together, it's another term for it. It's called a discriminated operant. 
can be a little bit tricky to understand, but just realize it's understanding what to do, when to do it, and earning a reinforcer for it. I, I, understanding. God, that was so anti-behavioral, but it makes the point, doesn't it? Right, so uh, engaging in appropriate behavior in a particular context earns you a reinforcer. When that has been established, when that pattern is there, then you have a discriminated operant. Forget that whole understanding thing. It's just a way to help you understand it. <laughs> in other words, being able to explain it to somebody else, that's what understanding really means. Anyway, hopefully I understand it and you listened and you learned something. So reinforce me, reinforce Brad along the way. Wave at us um, in, the, in the comments. You can wave, I guess, in the comments. That we might not see you, but feel free. Or say something or just, you know, drop us some cash. That might be kind of nice. We like those reinforcers.